Hello and welcome everyone to another one of these videos in which I'm just checking out a plugin. In this case, it is called QSynthy. QSynthy? QSynthy? Yeah, QSynthy. Now what does QSynthy has? It has envelope settings, filter settings, general settings, and it also has a bunch of stuff. I have no idea what it is, but I already tested it a little bit earlier today where I used QSynthy to layer a lead. So this is the lead without QSynthy. which sounds cute, but then I added QCindy and it became this. It's not just QCindy by the way, so let me break this up real quickly. This is the sound QCindy synthesizes. And that sounds a little bit weak compared to what you just heard, but of course you can see in the chain there is OTT. So when I heard this sound, I noticed immediately that it would be cool if every time it goes to this part of the waveform, it sort of resonates with the frequencies that are going on there. And typically when I have this idea, I load flare because I like that it's a flanger where you can set the center frequency as a pitch and then with the amount, make sure that it just wobbles around that pitch. And also you can dial in that it sounds a little bit more like a chord, which is pretty cool sometimes. So all of these arguments make this the plugin that I chose to let those frequencies resonate some more. It also adds a nice dynamic to the sound because now every time it reaches this point where it is here, it becomes a little bit louder. So it kind of pokes out of the mix. In solo, it doesn't sound so good with all of these dynamics, in my opinion. There it just sounds like, huh, why is there suddenly a resonance? But when you are listening to the difference in the mix, then I think it's pretty cool. I gotta say to that, you can test how it would sound without dynamics by just putting flair before OTT. The sound where it is before OTT is also useful because you have more of the background noise in it. However, in this case I wanted to get even less background noise, so I used the midband in Pro MB as an expander but only on a soft ratio and knee setting, so that it's like a natural transition. <laughs> I also use this opportunity to use some upwards compression here to like let the highs come up every time the sound comes a little bit quieter to give it a little bit more energy. Anyway, enough of this sound. I already made a new instance of QCenti for the second part, which sounds like this. So I want to layer this part as well. I want to talk about this synthesizer now and use it, but before doing that, I want to go to the website because I want to tell you one thing, this synthesizer is free, which is crazy because it is a completely new kind of technology in DSP apparently, as you will see very soon. So let's check this out. You can read the paper and it looks like a true math paper, except for the fact that at some point there are suddenly screenshots from a plugin which is a little bit funny in my opinion. But yeah, I, I mean, it's still a math paper. Of course, there is math in it. It's just kind of funny to see VST plugins in it because I always feel like VST plugins are more on the creative side of math. Our project offers an alternative approach to the sensory perception of the Schrödinger equation, an elementary model of quantum phenomena. So yeah, in order to even understand anything that's going on in this math paper, we would have to be good at quantum physics, which of course we all are. <laughs> okay, but let's still read this. Unique sounds that are in motion and feel alive. That's totally something that should be in a math paper because that's very measurable. The user is encouraged, but not forced to learn more about the underlying physics. So by using this plugin, we can learn something about physics. 
I want to know what there could be because the first time I tried it I didn't feel like I learned anything about physics but just about what I want to do with the sound. I don't know. So this part of the text basically just says that it can be very discouraging to learn about quantum physics because some of the concepts don't really have an analogism in real life and they want to make it a little bit better by making it more practical. Our approach is more basic, exchanging provable correctness for simpler explanation and understanding. So basically this tool simplifies a bunch of the quantum physics rules to make it more approachable. That's not uncommon in VSD plugins, like when you are making a physical modeling kind of plugin, you also don't always really um, measure some physical properties of some objects that you have laying around in your room, but sometimes you are just putting a comp filter or a modal filter somewhere and say, this is physical modeling bro, yeah, that's just how it is in VST plugins, as long as it's fun, it's cool. The Schrödinger equation is used to explore the connection between quantum states and sound information in both directions. I didn't know a quantum state had a direction, but I know that quantum physics and audio have a lot in common because it's often about properties of waves. Maybe that plays a role here? I don't know. <laughs> oh, this paper also has a part about sonification. It's funny because I was just thinking that this plugin is basically a bit like sonification. Sonification means that you are interpreting some data as some sound, even though it might not inherently have anything to do with sound. For example, all of these videos where there are sort algorithms that make you have probably seen them, they are always so great. And this is a pluginification of some physical properties of the real world. I once did a similar thing when I made the first version of my vibrato plugin Nell, which only had a randomizer modulator. The random values were basically decided from some study. And the study didn't have anything to do with music, it was just about some human behavior language thing. And I basically used these values that were resulting from the study to synthesize the randomized curve or the probability to land on certain values of it yeah I just decided that these things are now connected to each other and that's how you plug in EFI concepts from the real world yeah so there is a lot of stuff going on here about the math but I'm not really too interested in it because frankly if I wanted to plug in EFI some data I would have to get creative about it every time again and again there is no perfect formula for how to plug in EFI data everyone can do it the way they want and if the results are cool it's cool, so let's get started and play around with the parameters. So the first thing that I notice is that some of these parameters are not updating in real time. For example, this one only seems to update on new node values. It can sometimes feel a little bit laggy because of that. Maybe this is just an algorithm where some things cannot be computed for every single sample index of the audio buffer, but in case that this is possible, I would definitely change it because it would feel more responsive. Yeah, what I really like about this plugin is that sometimes you get to a very close by parameter value and it's a completely different sound. It can really surprise you what's going on here. Also nice tits. <laughs> This is one of my favorite parameters so far because it kind of makes everything so diffuse and noisy but in a extremely pleasant and fluid way. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
information. I see what the connection of these parameters is. This is the update speed of whatever this whole thing is doing. And if you are using the higher values here, which will make the modulation faster, then you can make it a little bit less noisy by just turning down the update speed. I have no idea what the thing in the middle is doing though. Maybe it would be good if by hovering the parameters, you could see some tooltips or something. <laughs> Okay, so this is a parabola, so it makes sense that the sound doesn't change at all when it's on zero. You can turn the parabola down or up and you can change its width and you can... But I, I, but I wonder what it, why you would want to change it so that it's not really there anymore. Oh, so it is still there, it just probably isn't painted when it's so thin, okay. So it's some image analyzing thing, not really. Yeah, it's not really not there. Can you see that? Boom, 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 boom. The graphics are just a little bit imprecise. So you can make a parabola and it can have some shape and it can have some direction. And what does it do to the sound? I have no idea, let's go. So this changed the sound a little bit. It sounds a little bit more like it says, yeah, 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 when I turned the sawtooth up. But did the parabola do anything? Yeah, totally. It got more of a brighter sound when it was down here. Like it focused more on the sprinkly kind of thing. And when I put it up, it was more of a warmer tone. So in this case, I like the warmer tone more. To emphasize on the warmness, we can also dial in a filter apparently. I gotta say, I have no idea what the env parameter is doing because like when a parameter next to a filter says env, I would expect it to be an envelope that is triggered by the MIDI notes, but that doesn't seem to be the case because I don't hear any pling, 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 pling. So what is this doing? I don't know what it's doing. I just better turn it off until I know more about it. If you know more about it, let me know in the comments. <laughs> So this seems to be the polyphony. So I don't use more than two notes, so I can use that glide. Why does glide not apply portamento to the synthesizer? Maybe it only happens when there are two overlapping notes. No wait, there were some glides. Yeah, so there are definitely glides, but they are extremely fast. They are definitely not five seconds long. And they are also there when glide is turned off. So I have no idea what glide is doing. Alright, so here we have a stereo feature. Let's find out in which way it makes the signal stereo. Yep, 
Yeah, that's not a very beautiful way to make the signal stereo. I don't know if it's always like that or just in this particular patch. I mean, maybe I just chose parameters that will just do that in stereo, which would be my own fault for not knowing better yet, because it would mean that this could still be a powerful feature. But for now, for this particular patch, I will not use it because it's just panning stuff to the right. And well, that's not very exciting. <laughs> This is a really cool parameter, which is definitely a little bit better than just something that we would usually find in some general settings. It appears to diffuse a bunch of the things that are going on in the plugin to let them reverberate throughout time and make the sound less stable. So it definitely feels like it's not just a reverb that is mixed in with a dry wet parameter. So let's find a diffusion setting that works with the sound as a layer. <laughs> One thing that I already noticed with the other instance of Q-Synth that I had here, where I also chose a very low diffusion setting of only 2%, is that on the low values, the diffusion setting makes an incredible difference. Like when you have it on 0%, you get a totally flat sound that is just completely not alive. And the moment you turn it to just 1%, it already gets some sort of body. And all of the close by values of 1% are also very cool to just shape this subtle body. And all of the settings that you can find afterwards are about more something like actual reverberant, bigger room kind of thingies that I'm currently not very interested in in this beat, but probably useful for some shoegazy stuff. That's why if I would re-implement this parameter, I would give the lower values a bigger range of the parameter so that it's easier to dial them in without holding a modifier key. Wait, modifier keys aren't even implemented on these sliders. So in that case, I would even more say that this would be cool. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the way the envelope parameters feel, especially now that I know that there are no modifier keys for sensitive drag. That just makes it feel like very fiddly. I like that the sound that I have right now is a little bit more in the background at the beginning and then it just jumps up at the end of the longer notes only. That adds a bit more of a note dependent dynamic to it. Now I first want to make sure that the moments where it is supposed to be quiet, it is even quieter in the high end. Now obviously this should happen in a more dynamic way. Nice, I like that. Uh, 
And next up, I want to find a useful tone that I can resonate on again. Oh, maybe this one. Maybe some more reverb. I like that. And that's enough of this video.